हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू इन लेक्चर नंबर वन ऑन वेव इक्वेशन वेव इक्वेशन इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्सल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन विच इज हैविंग मैनी एप्लीकेशंस इन डिफरेंट एरियाज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग लाइक फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिज्म एट्सेट्रा इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द मॉडल ऑफ वेव इक्वेशन यूजिंग द वाइब्रेशंस ऑफ एन इलास्टिक स्ट्रिंग वी विल सी दैट Uh, how this uh, mathematical model is governed by uh, some equation and with some conditions so uh, we are not going into the details of the physics we will just take an outlook about the wave equation that how the model of wave equation is working suppose i am having some string which i am taking along the x axis and suppose the length of the string which we assume to be elastic length of an elastic string is say capital l and we have fixed that elastic string at these two points at x equal to 0 and at x equal to l so suppose this is the string uh, not this one but we consider first we consider that string is fixed between these two points at x equal to 0 and at x equal to l that is string is at rest between these two points at x equal to 0 and at x equal to l we are not giving any uh, vibrations to the string now suppose Uh, we are considering stretching or vibration of this string between these two fixed end points then we will have this type of wave between these two points string may have some vibrations like this so this type of vibrations depend on the suppose i am interested at the displacement of string at this point then this displacement of string depends on the point or position of the string and on the time suppose we denote the displacement or deflection of string by u then we can say that u depends on position of string at that point that is x and time at that point so this u x t represents the deflection or displacement deflection or displacement of the string at position x and time t we are assuming that here we are considering deflection or vibrations of string in one dimension only that is we are considering the one dimension for this discussion that is we have only one space variable x so uh, we have function of position x and time t and that function is the deflection of vibrating string at point x comma t so how to decide the deflection or displacement of string at position x and time t that is our problem and uh, this model of vibrating string is governed by the famous equation which we call as wave equation so we are not deriving this wave equation but the wave equation is given by this second order partial differential e equation del square u by del t square equal to c square times del square u by del x square this c stands for the speed of the wave or wave speed wave speed means speed of this wave when string is given vibrations so our aim is to study the solution of this one dimensional wave equation which satisfies certain conditions now here we can see that our initially the string is fixed between these two points 
that is there is no vibration or there is no displacement at these two points so from that assumption we can write that when x is 0 and when x is equal to l there is no deflection that means we are having u 0 t equal to 0 u l t equal to 0 for all values of t so these two are called boundary conditions we are considering the conditions at the boundary of this string therefore these two are known as boundary conditions now whenever we are giving the vibration to the string then we will start with some initial velocity that means at time t equal to 0 u will be uh, some function of x at time t equal to 0 we, uh, we are considering velocity as partial derivative of u with respect to t and at time t equal to 0 and uh, we are also interested in the value of displacement at time t equal to 0 so suppose it is equal to some function of x this is the initial deflection that is uh, before giving the vibrations to the string what is the position of string at time t equal to 0 and we will start with some initial velocity at time t equal to 0 so that initial velocity is some another function of x say g of x so these two conditions specify the deflection of string at time t equal to 0 and velocity at time t equal to 0 so this condition is giving us the initial deflection initial deflection of the string and this is called initial velocity so with these four conditions there are two boundary conditions and two initial conditions our aim is to find out the di displacement of the string satisfying these four conditions what will be the uh, uh, displacement of vibrating string satisfying these two boundary conditions and these two initial conditions that is our aim in this lecture so for that we are going to apply the special method which we have discussed before this method of separation of variables and here we have u as a function of two variables x and t so we will assume that solution of wave equation is the product of two functions one is of x only and another is of t only and uh, using this assumption we will try to de determine the solution of this one dimensional wave equation satisfying these two boundary conditions and these two initial conditions so i have written this uh, solution here that i will discuss one by one so first we assume that our solution is in the product form and uh, i have written here this is the wave equation del square u by del t square equal to c square times del square u by del x square and this is called one dimensional wave equation this c square is uh, for tension divided by rho and uh, it is a physical constant and it is a positive quantity always so we are not going into the physics of the equation our aim is to decide the solution of the equation so here i have written the model of a vibrating string which we just discussed consists of the one dimensional wave equation given by number one and here u is the unknown deflection we want to determine the solution u therefore it is unknown deflection of the string and we have some additional conditions as follows so as i discussed that 
the string is fixed at the ends x equal to 0 and x equal to n. Therefore, we have two boundary conditions u 0 t equal to u l t equal to 0 for all t greater than or equal to 0. The form of the motion of the string will depend on its deflection at t equal to 0. That is, we are interested in the initial deflection also and it will depend on its velocity at t equal to 0. So, we have denoted the initial deflection by some function of x say fx and initial velocity by another function of x say gx and we have these two initial conditions del u x 0 equal to fx and del u by del t at t equal to 0 is gx and this is for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to l. Now we find solution of this partial differential equation number 1 satisfying the boundary conditions 2 and initial conditions given by number 3. And for method of separation of variables, we start with the assumption that solution is in the product form where capital X is a function of X only and capital T is a function of T only. Now here I have second order partial derivatives of u with respect to x and t. Therefore, I can write down those partial derivatives here. If you differentiate with respect to x, you have to consider t as constant and derivative of x with respect to x is denoted by x dash. Similarly, del square u by del x square again t is constant derivative of x dash with respect to x is x double dash t. Similarly, del u by del t is x times t dash and del square u by del t square will be x times t double dash. So, that we substitute in this equation. Here we have x times t double dash equal to c square times x double dash times t and then we try to separate the variables in capital X and capital T. So here I have written how these derivatives are obtained and substituting them into the wave equation we have x times t double dash equal to c square x double dash time t and we transfer this x on one side and this c square t is taken in the denominator here and now we can observe that in this equation left hand side is a function of x only, right hand side is a function of t only and these two functions are equal and x and t are independent variables. So, this equality given by number 5 can hold if and only if both sides are equal to the same constant. So, here I have written that left side of 5 is a function of x only and the right hand side is function of t only. Since x and t are independent variables, 5 can only be true if each side is equal to the same constant say k. Therefore, we equate both sides equal to k. And from this, we will have two ordinary differential equations. If I compare this with k, I will have x double dash equal to k times x and I will obtain x double dash minus kx equal to 0. Similarly, from this I will write t double dash equal to c square t into k and I will have t double dash minus c square k times t equal to 0. So, now I have two second order ordinary differential equations. One is in variable capital X, another is in variable capital T and I have to solve these two equations to decide the values of capital X and capital T. Now, before solving for equation number 6, we will use those two boundary conditions. Boundary conditions are u 0 t equal to 0 and u l t equal to 0. That is when x equal to 0, u is 0, when x equal to l, 
u is 0. Now by assumption what is u? u is nothing but x into t. So this I can rewrite as therefore value of x at 0 and t of t equal to 0 and here value of x at l t of t equal to 0. Now these two are in the product and suppose this is 0 and here t is, an t is a function of t. So suppose this is 0 for all t greater than or equal to 0 then from this we will obtain u equal to 0. So that is non-trivial solution. Therefore we must have x of 0 equal to 0 and here x of l equal to 0. So we obtain two boundary conditions for this ordinary differential equation, equation number 6. So that I have written here using 2, 4 gives x0 times t equal to 0, xl times t equal to 0. Now if t is 0, then u also becomes 0 which is of no interest. We are interested in the non-zero solution. Hence we consider that t is not identically equal to 0. Therefore, we must have x0 equal to 0 and xl equal to 0. And now we solve this equation number 6 with boundary conditions given by equation number 9. Again for the constant k which we have written here, this k is either 0 or positive or negative. We have to consider different possibilities and out of those three possibilities we have to decide that possibility for which we have a non-trivial solution or non-zero solution. So here we have taken three conditions. Suppose k equal to 0 and we are, we are solving this equation number 6. It is x double less minus kx equal to 0. So this is number 6. If I take k equal to 0 in 6, I will have x double less equal to 0. x double less equal to 0 means if I consider x double less equal to 0, then this is homogeneous linear ordinary differential equation and its auxiliary equation is m square equal to 0. That means m equal to 0 comma 0. Therefore, solution is given by a equal to some arbitrary constant say a into e raised to 0 x plus some another arbitrary constant into e raised to 0 x times x and this is a plus bx or we can write ax plus b if I interchange a and b. This is the general solution of this differential equation if k equal to 0. Now what are the conditions? x of 0 is 0 and x of l equal to 0. That means if I take x equal to 0, I have 0 equal to b. If I use this condition here, I have to take x equal to 0, small x equal to 0 and capital X equal to 0. That will give me b equal to 0. If I use this condition, then I have x equal to 0 and small x is l. That means I will obtain a into l plus b equal to 0. But b is 0, so a will be 0 because L is the length of the string which is positive. So what we obtain that if I consider these two conditions then solution of this equation is x is identically equal to 0. Now if x is identically equal to 0 then because u is product of x and t u is also identically equal to 0 which is of no interest so we will not consider k equal to 0. Now we consider second case in which k is positive. Now if k is positive we can write k as square of some 
real number say mu square where mu is non zero and then our aim is to solve this equation x double s minus k x equal to zero together with the conditions x zero equal to zero and x l equal to zero. So here we put k equal to mu square. So we have x double s minus mu square x equal to zero. And if I write down the auxiliary equation, I have m square minus mu square equal to zero. That will give me m equal to plus or minus mu. And therefore, general solution of this equation is a times e raised to mu x plus b times e raised to minus mu x. Now we apply these two conditions. Suppose I consider x of 0 equal to 0 that means put small x equal to 0 and capital X equal to 0 that will give me 0 equal to a plus b. If I use another condition then I will have 0 equal to a times e raise to mu l plus b times e raise to minus mu l and from this I will have b equal to minus a if I substitute here then I have done that thing here okay here I multiply this I am considering this two terms here I have e raised to mu into l so I multiply this by e raised to mu into l and I am subtracting 11 from 10 if I multiply this by e raised to mu l I will have e raised to mu l plus b times e raised to mu l equal to 0 and if I subtract this equation from this then I will have these two will get cancelled and I will have b times e raised to mu l minus b times e raised to minus mu l equal to 0. This I can rewrite as 1 over e raised to mu l that is 0. And if I multiply this whole equation by e raised to mu l, I will have e raised to mu l times e raised to mu l that is e raised to 2 times mu l. Here this will get cancelled equal to 0. Now we know that this is e raised to 2 mu l is always non-zero and uh, it is all not equal to 1 because mu and l are non-zero constants. So if this is 0 then this quantity can be 0 but mu and l are non-zero constants therefore e raised to 2 mu l can never be equal to 1 therefore we must have b equal to 0. But from this equation we find that b is equal to minus a or a equal to minus b therefore a is also 0. So here also a and b become 0 therefore if we put their values here then x becomes 0. So x is 0 and hence u is also identically equal to 0 because u is the product of x and t therefore we are not considering k positive. Third possibility is k is negative. We are interested in the non-zero solution. We are interested in the non-zero deflection of the string and for that uh, we find that for k equal to 0 and for k positive deflection is not non-trivial. We find that deflection is 0 for these two cases. Now we are discussing for third case. Suppose k is negative. Now if k is negative I can write k as negative of square of some non-zero real number say p k is equal to minus p square that I substitute in that equation x double dash minus k x equal to 0. So if I take k equal to minus p square I will have x double dash plus p square x equal to 0 and if I want to solve this I will write down the auxiliary equation which is m square plus p square equal to 0 
and from this I will obtain m square equal to minus p square and if I replace minus 1 by i square I will have m equal to plus or minus p into i and this I can rewrite as 0 plus or minus p into i. Therefore, general solution is a times cos px plus b times sin px. I hope you are familiar with the methods of solving higher order ordinary differential equations. We know that if roots of auxiliary equation are complex, then general solution corresponding to this pair is e raised to alpha x cos beta x plus e raised to alpha x sin beta x and if we compare this with alpha plus or minus beta we have alpha equal to 0 and beta equal to p so that we substitute here and we obtain this general solution x equal to a times cos px plus b times sin px now we use those two boundary conditions if i take x 0 equal to 0 that is I put x equal to 0 and capital X equal to 0 and uh, here we can see capital X is 0 a times cos 0 that is a sin 0 is 0 so we obtain a equal to 0 if we use x of L equal to 0 then a times cos PL plus b times sin PL equal to 0 but a is 0 therefore b times sin pl equal to 0 and if we take b equal to 0 then a is already 0 so if we consider b equal to 0 and a is already 0 then we will have x equal to 0 and if x is 0 we will have u equal to 0 that is not required we are interested in the non-zero solution therefore we assume that b is non-zero and therefore because b is assumed as non-zero this sin pl must be equal to zero now if sin pl is zero pl will be equal to n times pi and we are interested in the value of p so that is p equal to n pi over l n is any integer therefore p equal to n pi divided by l so we can see p is equal to n pi over l that we substitute here so what we obtain x equal to now a is 0 and b is non-zero so b times sin p is n pi over l that is n pi x divided by L. So, this x is obtained here we assume that b is arbitrary constant so we can take b equal to 1 also. So, finally we obtain that x equal to sin n pi x by l n is an integer. Here uh, because b is arbitrary constant we have taken b equal to 1 and for different values of n we will have different values of capital X so instead of writing in this way we can denote these solutions by x suffix n also so that we have written here that non-zero solutions of equation number 6 which was x double dash minus kx equal to 0 satisfying boundary conditions 9 that is x0 equal to 0 xl equal to 0 are given by xn equal to sin n pi x by l here we have written n from 1 to 3 and so on because for negative integer n we obtain essentially the same solutions except for a minus sign because sin of minus x equal to minus sin x if you observe here we have written n belongs to z and if uh, I consider negative n then the only difference in this solution is of negative sign so here we have written only 
for n equal to 1 2 3 and so on so what we have done up to so far is uh, we have obtained the non zero solutions of x double dash minus k x equal to 0 satisfying these two conditions x of 0 equal to x of l equal to 0 and we uh, take k equal to negative of p square and solutions satisfying this boundary value problem are given by sin n pi x by l n equal to 1 2 3 and so on so this is the uh, solution satisfying this second order ordinary differential equation for this function capital x which is a function of x only and we have obtained one function our aim is to determine the u which is deflection and it is the product of capital x and capital t and we have obtained capital x now we try to solve another equation which is in the another function capital t which is a function of time t now we try to obtain that function so for that we have to solve this equation number 7 and we have obtained the non zero solutions for equation 6 in the case of k equal to minus p square and we find that p is n pi over l so we will put k equal to negative of p square that is negative of this n pi over l square that is n square pi square l square in this equation and then we will solve it so next step is that i have written here let me scroll down so now i am taking k equal to minus p square in equation number 7 that was t double dash minus k c square t equal to 0 and here i am taking k equal to minus n square pi square over l square that is minus k is n square pi square over l square into c square into t equal to 0 and uh, if i solve this uh, before solving this i can take this uh, c n pi over l this quantity is square of c n pi over l or c into p that i denote by say lambda n for conveniency so i i will have square of lambda n t equal to 0 and to solve this again i will write down the auxiliary equation which is m square plus lambda n square equal to 0 and if i solve this i will have m square equal to minus lambda n square that is lambda n square into i square and therefore m equal to plus or minus lambda n times i and we have complex roots and alpha is 0 beta is lambda n so solution will be t equal to some constant into cosine of lambda n t plus some another constant into sine of lambda n t so those two constants i have taken as b suffix n and b n star suffix n for each lambda n we denote that arbitrary constant by b n so b n cos lambda n t plus say b n star sin lambda n t hence we obtain this uh, solutions of equation 1 satisfying boundary conditions 2 so far we have not used initial condition uh, we are we have this value of t and uh, value of x were obtained here sin n pi x over l that we substitute in this equation in the next step and u is given by x into t and this x and t are denoted by xn and tn because we have different solutions for different values of n therefore we write u suffix n and 
we have this type of solution. We substitute values of xn and tn. And uh, here x xn was taken as sin n pi x by l. We had taken that arbitrary constant b equal to 1 and this is tn that we just obtain here bn cos lambda and t plus bn star sin lambda and t. So, these functions are known as eigenfunctions or characteristic functions and this value this lambda n what is lambda n it was the value c n pi over l this lambda n equal to c n pi over l they are called eigenvalues or characteristic values of the vibrating string and uh, we have not used initial conditions so far so we know that these eigenfunctions satisfy the boundary conditions and uh, to use initial conditions uh, we will apply this superposition principle first we know that if our partial differential equation is linear and homogeneous and if u1 u2 and u and and so on are solutions of the homogeneous linear partial differential equation then their sum is also a solution of the same homogeneous linear partial differential equation that is called superposition principle for homogeneous linear partial differential equations. So, what we will do that wave equation is linear and homogeneous. So, if we take sum of all these eigenfunctions functions u and x t then their sum is also a solution of wave equation by the superposition principle and we denote that sum by u equal to sigma u n n equal to 1 to infinity and we substitute this value of u n here from equation 12 we substitute here u n equal to this. Now we know that these eigenfunctions satisfy boundary conditions and we have not used the initial conditions so far. What were the initial conditions? that at t equal to 0 initial deflection is given by fx and initial velocity at t equal to 0 is given by g of x. So, we will use now these two conditions and then using those two conditions we will be able to determine these two constants bn and bn star. So, first we take uh, this condition we use this condition we take t equal to 0 and u equal to fx here. So, if I use this condition I will have fx equal to if I take t equal to 0 this is going to be 0 and I will have bn sin n pi x by l. So, using u x 0 equal to fx in 13 we have fx equal to sigma n equal to 1 to infinity bn sin n pi x by l 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to l. Now, if you think then this is a familiar series. It is nothing but Fourier sign series of this function fx in the interval 0 to l and we know that if we have Fourier sign series then these coefficients are called Fourier coefficients and they are given by bn equal to 2 divided by l integral 0 to l fx sin n pi x by l integral with respect to x. So, here we have written that the series on the right hand side is just the Fourier sign series for function fx therefore, bn is given by 2 by l integral 0 to l fx sin n pi x by l integral with respect to x. So, using this initial deflection we are able to determine the constants b n. Now, to apply this condition first I have to take partial derivative of equation number 13 on both sides with respect to t. So, if I take del u by del t here 
uh, i will write del u by del t here here this this has derivative minus sin lambda nt into lambda n same thing here cos lambda nt into lambda n there is no t here so we will keep this as it is so in the next step we are differentiating equation 13 partially with respect to t and we have written this derivative of that u x t now we use that condition that del u by del t equal to g x when t equal to 0 that is initial velocity is a function of x denoted by g x so in this equation we take del u by del t equal to g x and we take t equal to 0 so for t equal to 0 this is 0 and here we will have d n star lambda n this is going to be 1 into sin n pi x by l and sigma so we obtain this g x equal to sigma n equal to 1 to infinity d n star lambda n sin n pi x by l and this is in the interval 0 to n this is also a Fourier sign series for function g x therefore these constants are given by 2 by l times integral of g x times sin n pi x by l integral with respect to x so therefore i have written this and i put lambda n equal to c n pi over l if i take lambda n equal to c n pi over l here this l will get cancelled and i will obtain b n star equal to 2 divided by c n pi 0 to l g x sin n pi x over l dx you can see we are using fourier series here and uh, using fourier series we are able to determine these two constants b n and b n star so this is our final solution here u is given by equation number 13 and this b n and b n star are given by these two formulas of Fourier coefficients b n and b n star is equal to this so i have written here solution of wave equation satisfying boundary and initial conditions is given by series in 13 with the coefficients computed from 14 and 15 so this is very interesting derivation and uh, what we have to remember is we have to remember this equation number 13 whenever our problem which we are solving is of one dimensional wave equation equation 13 is the solution of one dimensional wave equation it is given by u x t equal to sigma b n cos lambda n t plus b n star sin lambda n t sin n pi x over l where lambda n is nothing but c n pi over l where c is the constant in the wave equation lambda n is c n pi over l what is this c c is the constant our wave equation is u t t equal to c square times u x x so this c is here and this lambda n are called eigenvalues and uh, here b n and b n star are given by Fourier series Fourier coefficients and they are given by these two formulas b n equal to 2 by l integral 0 to l f x sin n pi x by l dx where f x is initial deflection that will be given in the problem you will be given the value of u at t equal to 0 by some function f x that function you have to use here and b n star is 2 over c n pi g x sin n pi x over l dx where this g x is initial velocity so you will be given another initial condition that del u by del t at x comma 0 is equal to g x so that function you have to use here this is called initial 
vendor city so here we have derived the solution of one dimensional wave equation and using the method of separation of variables we can see that solution is very interesting and uh, we can generalize this concept to two dimension also if i am adding one more space variable say uxx plus uyy then this is called two dimensional wave equation similarly i can go for three dimensional wave equation also uyy plus uzz this is three dimensional wave equation but in our course we are having only one dimensional wave equation that is only one space variable and another variable is time and we have to solve this wave equation satisfying two boundary conditions and two initial conditions in the problems of wave equation you will be given the length of the vibrating string and so that you have two boundary conditions that there is no deflection at the end points and you will be given the deflection of string at the initial time that is will function of x and you will also be given the initial velocity at time t equal to 0 that will be another function of x so this information will be given you have to determine what is your c or c square and you have to decide what is capital L you have to see that what is initial deflection what is gx using all these things you will be able to determine the solution and we will not always apply this method of separation we will remember this solution of wave equation and we will directly obtain this bn and bn star remember this solution of one dimensional wave equation and remember the formula for bn bn star and lambda n also so we will discuss so problems related to wave equation in upcoming lectures thanks for watching